we're at the Renewable Energy World Conference here, mm -hmm. and you gave a presentation on the military going green, using renewable energy. Can you tell me about what they're doing? They're the largest consumer of energy in the world. In the world. In the world. Wow. And largest consumer of fossil fuels in the world. Uh, in Afghanistan, by the time diesel fuel gets to the front lines, it's $400 a gallon. Wait a minute. Yeah. That gets my, you know, yeah. that's not $4, that's no. $400 per wow. gallon. Most of this fuel is trucked in in trucks, and that's the number one terrorist target are these trucks. Mm. So 800 to 1,000 casualties in Afghanistan for people just bringing fossil fuels to the front line. So that's one reason the military is viewing energy, national security, um, go to renewables. You don't have to rely on the fuels. But the other thing is just their military bases themselves. If there's a major terrorist strike or just a major storm, they don't want the power to go out. And so that's why they're looking towards renewables and then something called a microgrid to kind of get the renewables to work together in a, in a network. Can you give me some examples? 29 Palms Marine Base. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's one of the largest, if not the largest, military microgrid under development. GE, General Electric, it's sort of their flagship project. It's, How big is this marine base? It's about 30 megawatts. So this is a good size facility. Very good size. Yeah. How many megawatts could be look, the military be looking at in terms of if they really rolled this out across the U.S.? Well, our forecast says that by 2017, we expect um, 400 megawatts of online capacity. That's like a nuclear power plant. A small nuclear power wow. plant. Wow. Yep. Wow. And then we think after that, it's just going to go exponential. In fact, every single military base in the U.S. will eventually become a micro. -grade. All of them. All of them. Wow. Yep. And running off of solar and wind and smart, efficient operations. Yeah, and biofuels. Biofuels, okay. Waste to energy. Yep. Because yep. they have a military has zero, not a, I think they have zero net energy, but I think zero net waste, too. So at some point, they have to figure out what to do with this waste. And so, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Solar and wind are the sexy ones, but in some ways... If you've got a bunch of waste, you know, one of the highest uses of that waste is to create energy. Right, right. As and long as you can do it cleanly. And, you know, solar PV costs have come down 75% right. in the last three years. So I think that's one of the main drivers is solar PV is the easiest way, renewable, to use in a microgrid. You know, you put it up, it doesn't need wind. is a little more tricky. And what about, like, fuel cells off of natural gas with natural no. gas prices so low now? Yes. CHP is, is the perfect anchor technology for a microgrid. CHP being? Combined heat and power. Ah. So you're using the one fuel. Cogen. Right, cogen. That's right. what most micro, uh, not most, but a lot of microgrids will have CHP because then you're producing heat too. You're providing right. other services. And then you'll have some solar PV, wind if you can, and some storage. And then sometimes some other, you know, diesel or biofuels. Whatever.